Well, in addition to these complexities about things you're learning and being introduced to, did you think at the time that this engagement in these other issues and, and in race were somehow part of a leadership training, that you were learning how to run an organization, you're learning how to marshal your thoughts. Did you think then, or can you look back on it now and say what you took away from this, in addition to the specific issues, mm -hmm. what this experience mm -hmm. taught you? Well, I think that, that I always had, from the moment that I had a consciousness about self and surroundings and the world. Mm. I always had a sense of high expectations. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't say that my parents or my great-grandfather in particular sat me down and said, now, little John Netta, you're gonna be a leader. Mm. But yet, it was almost like it was in the water. Mm. It was all around me. How could I do less than my folk had done. How could I have all of this and not do something with it? How could I sleep with myself with the privileges that I had unless I was figuring out how I was gonna do something for somebody else? So Oberlin, in a sense, simply encouraged all of that. There was never a question about whether I was gonna go to college. The issue was where. There was never a question, I think, about whether I should be in organizations and be in leadership roles. The question was, which organizations? Which leadership roles? And yet, I don't think, I may be fooling myself, but I don't think that I had an unbearable amount of pressure on this question. I mean, I'm very conscious of this, Julian, that, that sometimes we really do overdo it mm -hmm. with our children. And we, we set goals for them without any participation on their part. Could it have been so subtle that you didn't realize it and still don't? Well, it was there. And benign. But benign. you know, I think it was dished up <clears throat> with lots of sugar coating mm -hmm. or with, or with with an image of it that did not make it seem unbearable. Uh, it really wasn't subtle. I mean, it was, you know, if I had to hear A.L. Lewis tell me one more time, you know, in Micah, what doth the Lord require of thee? I mean, the message was just delivered mm -hmm. over and over again. I mean, Sunday school, every Sunday, where he was the superintendent, and we're being told one more time what we're to do for the race. So it's not that it was subtle. Mm. It's almost that it was painted as inevitable and really doable. That you had no choice. Yeah, I didn't that have any This choice. was going to happen to you. And these experiences, going away to school first to D.C. at this early age, and going to, to Fisk at this early age, and then transferring to Oberlin, I'm just curious as to how these shaped a kind of independence of thought and action in you. So in addition to this home training, if you will, and home nurturing, if you will, these other experiences, particularly at a young age of being on your own, and I know you're not alone, your sister's with you, you're, uh, being on your own, what does that do for you? Mm. Well, I've often thought that, that my own development as let me use words that I self-define by, as a public intellectual mm -hmm. and politically as one who is progressive. Mm -hmm. um, I've often thought that, that there is a pattern here and that while Fisk was not a place of hotbed lefties, mm -hmm. um, it was nevertheless a place where I did begin to get certain messages, you know, both from white and black faculty Oberlin, it was out. Mm -hmm. It was all out. I mean, Oberlin was then and is still today one of the most liberal-minded liberal arts colleges in America. And I'm picking all of this up, and I'm not rejecting it. Mm -hmm. It is feeling all right to me. And while there were certainly moments when I would 
think, hmm, wonder what the folk back in Jacksonville mm -hmm. would think about this. Again, it seemed to have happened at a pace and with an intensity that I was able to not just take in, but to really claim mm -hmm. and to find a, a kind of authenticity with. Um, I didn't feel, in other words, that I was now learning to play the role of the little radical student at Oberlin. Mm -hmm. It just seemed that I was a rather standard Oberlin student, mm -hmm. all of whom were pretty radical. Mm -hmm.